Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we will be discussing about a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to work with some Vendacious orchids. We're gonna pot them in these really, really gorgeous clay pots that I have for a while now and I wanted to put them to good use and really I've been planning this for a while now. However, the orchid that I'm gonna work with today needed to go through an adjustment period. So I potted it in a temporary setup. So I'm gonna tell you what that means. This is an idea I might have mentioned here and there in videos, but today I really wanna focus on it and dedicate quite a lot of time to it because it is an important part of my hobby, which I actually didn't see many people do. Don't know if it's something everybody does, they just don't talk about it. So I'll tell you why I use temporary setups and how they help my orchids and eventually we are going to pot this beautiful Neophenicia hybrid into this beautiful pot. As a little side note, one of the things I was never super good at is related to design, arrangements, things of the sorts. I just don't have an eye for it. But you know what? I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to make my environment look a little bit prettier and also be optimal for my orchids. And one of the things in which we can prettify our growing space is with the use of beautiful pots. Because let's face it, orchids are mainly out of bloom than in bloom. So we might as well enjoy the setup and our growing space even if our orchids are not in bloom. So without further ado, let's start by talking about the temporary setup. As the name suggests, a temporary setup is one that will not remain with the orchid throughout the years. I personally use these setups to transition an orchid to a different type of setup, but not only. The ICU setups that I sometimes do, including the humidity dome for my sick phalaenopsis, all of them, they're temporary, they are transitional, they help out my orchid either recover, either get adjusted to a particular setup, and even to my environment and my style of caring for my orchids. The orchids that I typically put through a temporary setups are those who either are sick and need some special treatment, or the ones who come from such a very different setup than the one I want to transition them to, that if I put them directly into the setup I want, things will not end up very well. How many times did it happen to you that you buy an orchid, you repot it, and then a month later or so, you discover that all of the roots are completely gone? I bet you that a few of you have gone through this, I did too, and one of the main reasons why this happens is because the roots suffer a shock. Since they were adjusted to grow in a particular type of medium, which might be airy or might be quite moist, and now we switch them to something which is totally different, they will encounter issues in adapting and some of the times they will not adapt at all if the change is too big. For example, if we try to pot an orchid which was grown bare-rooted, maybe a keiki, maybe a vanda, many of the times we will experience quite a few of the older roots simply not adjusting and rotting away. And that to some extent is very normal because the two setups are just so so different that the roots will not adjust. I do have videos talking about it, I'll link you to them down below in the description. I do have some tips that I hope will help you transition these roots, but there are cases, one of which we will see today, in which no matter how many tips we apply, we will still end up with some dead roots shortly after repotting and we will have to face the decision of re-repotting the orchid or letting all of those roots rot in the medium, spoil the medium and force us to repot the orchid maybe after six months or a year. And well, here is where the transitional setup steps in. This orchid was mounted. I purchased it about three months ago. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it, but because I know many, many of the roots will die off within the first or two months, I decided to not place it in the pot that I want to grow it in, but in a transitional pot. And for me, the easiest pot is of course the plastic pot, because during this time, yes, the older roots may die, but I will have new roots sprouting, which might get stuck to the pot. 
If they get stuck to the plastic, I can remove them super easy. They will not be damaged. If I am a little careful, they will not even feel that they have been re-repotted. And of course, this setup also has the ultimate medium that I want this orchid to grow in. And you can imagine the difference. This orchid was kept pretty much bare-rooted on a mount, and now it's gonna go into moss and bark, which is my typical growing medium. You can imagine there will be a shock there. But it is important for me to transfer this orchid in the ultimate medium because the point of this is to see which of the roots will actually adapt, which will continue to do okay for another few years and which will not. When I talked about this in the past, I had quite a few of you saying that sometimes you prefer to keep the orchid bare-rooted, see how many roots survive, how many you need to cut, and in this way, you prevent the new roots getting stuck to whatever pot, which is a good idea and is not at the same time. Because if the final setup you have in mind for that orchid is not bare-rooted, but moss or a mixture or potted, then the transition you're making is not actually transitioning into anything other than continue to keeping that orchid bare-rooted. Of course, in case you unmount an orchid and then you intend to keep it bare-rooted but you just want to switch the mount, transitioning it without being mounted but just kept bare-rooted makes absolute sense because the orchid will end up bare-rooted. You just want to see how many roots got damaged way too much to still survive. But if the end goal is a pot or a setup with a medium, which is very, very different, I do suggest your transition setup actually contains that medium that you are going to use. This is the only way in which you will be able to tell which roots will adapt to this medium and which will not. Otherwise, you can have the surprise of having two, three roots not making it when you keep it bare-rooted, but then when you pot it eventually, you will notice more and more roots starting to rot. So I hope it makes sense. Bottom line, try to make your transitional setup as close to the one that you will end up with, but as easy to control and to customize as possible. And since the only difference between my transitional setup and the final setup is the actual pot, this orchid is already adjusted and adapted to this medium. We will get to see how many roots survived because if they survived for two months here, most probably they will continue to be okay for the next months or even years. And also we can see that we do have new roots growing as well. I am absolutely sure that if new roots grew in the pot, they're already adapted to this medium and I can safely remove them from the sides of the pot. So with that said, let's go to the potting table because I have some tips for this type of pot as well. Now, first of all, this is a pot that I received from RepotMe quite a while ago, last year actually. I had the intention to pot some Phalaenopsis in it, but then I thought about it and I thought, hey, you know what, some Neophenicia hybrids will look even better in something like this. And I will show you what other orchids I have in these pots. So I kind of postponed the idea until I found the perfect orchid. And by the way, this is a Neophenicia fulcata crossed with Wrinkle Stylus Gigantia Rubra, which is the red variety. So the flowers should be spectacular. And I think they will create such a cute contrast with this blue pot that, you know what, it was worth to wait and hang on to these pots for the perfect orchid. Now, there are some considerations here. This is a glazed clay pot. It will not benefit from the advantages of the clay pot, which is not glazed. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, do check out the description. I'll share with you a video in which I talk about the pros and cons of clay pots. Generally, those things do not necessarily apply to this. This is more like a plastic pot, but it's clay. It has ventilation holes, as you can see, and the best feature of it is that it's pretty. <laughs> as I was saying, I want to prettify my growing style. Does that make sense? I want to get better at it. Now, there are some disadvantages, of course. Roots will grow out of the ventilation holes. They will also attach to this pot. With this one, we cannot squeeze on it and make them just remove themselves from the pot. I suspect that if we soak it very well and we go about removing the roots one by one carefully, we're gonna do a good job because the glaze is very, very smooth. It doesn't actually have texture and orchid roots tend to get very, very attached to textured stuff. 
but I don't know, I've never detached roots from this type of pot. I can only imagine, but because I do have this inconvenience of the clay pot that it can damage roots, I want to go for orchids that I know every spring they create an abundance of new roots. Vandas do that, Neophonicias, because they're vendacious orchids, they do that, and also Phalaenopsis do that. When they're done blooming, typically in the spring, they put out a flush of new roots, which is ideal because in the case that I will damage quite a lot of the older roots, the new roots will be already there, making sure that my orchid will not be set back. Now, because my style of mixing my medium includes a blend of sphagnum moss and bark, I also have my own style of watering, which I have a video on, you can see it down below in the description. What I do is pour water on top of the pot, let it pull in the little saucer, and from there it will get absorbed back by the moss. Well, in this case, the pot is slightly raised from the saucer, so let me give you a close-up. I'm boosting a little bit the exposure so you can see what I mean. Now, this is done to prevent the orchid sitting in water because most people prefer to water at the sink, prefer to use bark rather than moss. So this pot probably is made to fit to most people's preferences. However, I can totally customize it to make it fit my preferences. And the only thing that I need to do is create a wick for it. I have here some wicking synthetic fiber. I will cut a length at least as tall as my pot is and I forgot the exposure on high. And to make sure that my ends don't start to frail, I am going to seal it with a little torch. This is a plastic type material, that's why I can do this. If you're not sure if your thread will just catch fire rather than melt, just put a little bit of hot glue or super glue at the end and it should seal it perfectly, it will not frail. So because this pot actually doesn't touch the saucer and also because it's pretty tall and very ventilated, which is perfect for Vandas, but not so perfect for me sometimes, the wick will just make sure that the water that remains in the tray will be absorbed by the moss in the medium through the wick. So all I do is insert it through the drainage hole. I like to make sure that it's touching the dish very, very well. As for the orchid, well, I actually don't need to do much. I need to cut away all of the roots that died, if any of them died away. And I will also reuse the medium because it's brand new. So no point in throwing it away. Now, because in this amount of time, my orchid didn't actually get to establish too much. Most that it created are a few roots, which as I was saying, come right off. I am not very concerned that I'm going to stress it out. So let's see what we have in the pot. And look at that. Most of the roots are actually doing okay. Some of them are branching out, which is such, such good news. Really good to see. But I do have here and there a few sections that didn't make it. So I will remove all of these sections, which are not alive anymore. I think that was the only one actually. Let me properly check. I have another one here. And look at that. I actually don't have a lot of dye back. Well, it also helped that I did not keep this pot super, super soggy all of the time. Yes, it's wet now because I just watered the orchids yesterday. But typically when I pot up orchids which came from bare-rooted setups, I don't go very hard on the watering. I make sure that everything is very airy. It will be a little bit more moist, of course, but not extremely. I do talk more at length about this in a video down below. I will link you a whole lot of videos below, like I always do. So with my orchid pretty much cleaned up, it is time to arrange the medium in my pot. So even with this pot, I will still place the sphagnum moss at the bottom because this is the medium which wicks. And I want to have really, really good contact with the artificial wick. 
let's arrange our orchid see how it fits in the pot and of course I did choose pots which are fairly similar size wise so I have no issues making this orchid fit in the pot so now just like with any other repotting I'm just going to arrange the medium inside the pot trying to be careful that I don't damage the roots one thing that I did was bury a little bit the wick which is okay because now I can place it like this and arrange medium around it. So I'll go ahead and do that really, really fast. And there we go, my orchid is potted up and looking wonderful. On top, I still kept the bark layer because I don't want a mat of algae and I know it would happen with sphagnum moss, but the bark, it does not happen, it remains clean. And also I'm going to tuck this wick somehow in the dish like so just to make it a little bit more inconspicuous you wouldn't actually see it unless you know what you're looking for and that is about it from now on the orchid should do absolutely fine now this type of pot obviously can be used in other ways as well depending how you water your orchids what type of setup or medium you want to go for so because this was just way too raised from the dish i wanted to make sure that i still have an easy life while looking at something super super pretty and just look at this contrast i bet when the orchid will also flower it's gonna look spectacular so let me show you what other pots of the type i have and what i put in them so this is sort of my pretty shelf. I have my Neo Finisha Fulcatas here in the Japanese moss mounding style. And I initially considered doing the very same thing with these pots, but then again, I would have had to use a lot of moss and really I don't have moss all that available in my area. I need to order and ordering is not really easy to do during this period. So I gave up that idea and decided to go for my traditional bark and sphagnum moss. So you can see here another style of pot. It's not round, it's a hexagon, I think, or a pentagon. It's pretty nonetheless. And this was actually the first pot of its kind that I had. And in this one, I decided to put an Ascofinidia peaches, which has really, really lovely coral flowers. So I think it's just gonna go so, so great with this turquoise or teal type of pot. I think the colors will look spectacular and this orchid already is adjusted to growing in the medium. I have another peaches outside, it's growing more like a vanda. This has grown more like, I guess, the new Phoenicia. Anyway, this one is potted. Here I have another pot with the same shape but it's a different color. Here I decided to place my vanda purea little one which is a cross between, well, nowadays I think it's a Phalaenopsis altogether because all of these species have been reclassified as Phalaenopsis. So I guess it's Phalaenopsis little one. Anyway, it used to be a Sideria, one of its parents. And Sideria's do very, very well in the Japanese style as well. And they just look pretty. So I decided to plant this one in this pot as well. Then here I have the Neo Stylus Lucneri, which is a wonderful Neo Phoenicia hybrid that has blue and white flowers. So I decided to pair it with this pot, which is half blue, half cream white. So when it's gonna be in bloom, I think it's gonna look really pretty. This orchid, by the way, was bare rooted and I treated it exactly like the one that I showed you today. The roots are doing just fine. And here is my Neo Phoenicia hybrid that we just potted today. It will sit here next to the other ones and just look pretty. I love it, it's so pretty. And that's about it for today. I will put links for these pots down below in the description, of course. There are other styles or other sizes as well, but I hope this was inspirational. So I'll keep you up to date. It will be very interesting to see how I go about repotting these when I will need to repot them. But the thing is, I'm not going to have to repot them very soon because this setup is pretty airy. It's not the type of setup that sits moist. These are vendacious orchids and they don't actually require that. So the medium will not go bad all that fast. I think I have at least two years or even more in this setup. So I think we should be fine. But yeah, I'll keep you up to date. I will film a repotting and we'll see how we go about it then. But for now, it's so pretty. I enjoy prettifying a little bit my growing space and I hope to get better at it. But there we go. We can always customize our setups to suit us more, even if it means putting a wick through a pot which is not supposed to sit in water. 
just so we make it sit in water. It's okay, anything goes. Anything that helps you, goes. And all of these tricks you will come up with or you'll learn along the way as you discover what you need in your environment. So with that said, I think it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I will see you all next time. Bye!